when I was a kid, uh, I had a friend who became a banker just after finishing his college. I always had this image of him in my mind as a guy opening and closing the safe door some hundred times per day until he invited me to his office, which looked like something like this. I was so surprised, and so he started to explain to me that there are some banks who collect your money and give it as a loan to families, to businesses, or maybe to other banks, while some other banks, they use your money for trading on the top of the traditional um, loan making that they do. So based on this conversation, I learned that along with the type of the banks that I had imagined, there are also other types of the banks who uh, are investment banks and they do trading on, uh, besides making loan to the banks. So let's call these two banks by deposit bank and the merchant bank. When we look at the real data from the US economy, we notice that these two types of bank, they have completely different sources of bank, uh, funding. They also react quite differently to changes in uh, some economic and financial indices. And most importantly, they behave differently when things go wrong. So the bottom line is that the banking system is not like a black box. This observation was our motivation in our research to ask uh, what would be the story of a banking crisis if it takes such differences into account. And based on that story, uh, what we can say about uh, the impact on the social welfare and taxpayers. This schematic illustrates the whole system. Imagine Joe has uh, his saving account in the deposit bank of his neighborhood. The bank, which is insured by the government, lends his money to the merchant bank where my friend works, and he lends the money to the industry, which receives labor from uh, Joe and others like him, and in return, they provide Joe with goods and services. Our model takes into account uh, what each component wants, what they produce, how they interact, and how their interactions change over time. So since our interest is more about banks, I isolate the banks and uh, we try to see more precisely what's happening between them. The industry, in order to start working, they call the merchant bank and they ask for some money and the merchant bank, in order to fulfill this request, they call the deposit bank and they ask for some funding. And in exchange of some collateral, as a guarantee, they receive some funding. And now they can give it as a loan to the industry and receive back some interest rate. We expose this mechanism to three different scenarios. In the first case, which I call it good times. Everything is working perfectly with the industry, so everyone else in the system is also happy. But in the second case, the industry, they are not doing as great as before, so they may not be able to fully repay their obligation to the merchant bank, so the bank gets stressed. So does its collateral. To compensate for that, the bank is forced to sell a fraction of its assets with short notice, and then things come back to normal. But in the third case, the situation with the industry is so severe that even the fire cell wouldn't save the bank, and they have to liquidate more and more assets in order to repay their obligations to the deposit bank, but eventually they default and they have to close the door. At this point, the deposit bank is also stressed. So they try to recover their money back from the merchant bank, uh, and either they are left with enough money to keep working, or uh, they don't have enough to repay the money back to Joe and other customers, and they go bankrupt too. At this point, having this mechanism in place, the natural question is how much money is lost? But before answering this question, 
let's ask who can uh, step in and save the bank. Since everyone in the system is already so weak, it's only the government who can afford doing so. But with whose money? Of course, taxpayers. So it, it makes it even more crucial to have an idea about how big uh, th this burden would be on the shoulder of taxpayers. To answer to this question, we calibrated our model on the US economy and uh, with a crash as severe as what we had in the 2008 crisis, we noticed that this number is around $3 trillion of loss. But if we go one step back and force our bank to hold more cash, this number, which is equivalent to 20% of the GDP of the US before the crisis, drops to just $0.3 trillion. So uh, the theoretical story that we just explored together it gives us, as researchers and regulators, insight about what we should do in the real world in order to save taxpayers. So back to the real world, we have also developed models that evaluate the impact of uh, different segments of the economy on individual banks, which, as I showed, is crucial for the social welfare. Thank you so much. <laughs>